All networks in the world are under constant attack or threat of attack, whether it is by cyber criminals trying to steal information to sell later, or by hackers trying to cause damage for the fun of it, every network is constantly being probed for weaknesses. Data can often be very easily stolen through techniques like man-in-the-middle attacks or brute force hacking. This can lead to serious consequences, such as having confidential data stolen, which could lead to large fines and a loss of customer trust. It is vital that we implement threat prevention techniques in order to minimize the likelihood and potential impact of these threats. To gain access to an operating system or application, we must authenticate ourselves as having the right to access that system. We usually do this through a username and password. The password is used to authenticate the user as the person who should have those access rights. These passwords have to be kept private and secure to prevent attempts to gain unauthorized access. Weak passwords, such as ones made up of a simple word, are incredibly easy to crack by any hacker. Pretty much any simple word will be able to be cracked instantly. That's why strong passwords are required. Strong passwords will not contain a dictionary word, have uppercase letters, lowercase letters, numbers and symbols, and be a minimum of 10 characters in length. By following these rules, a password will be strong enough that it will be almost impossible to crack through brute force. Encryption is the process of taking something understandable and turning it into something apparently unreadable. We encrypt data using an encryption algorithm and an encryption key. The algorithm is the process performed to convert the data into the ciphertext. We sometimes refer to this as a cipher. The key is a unique string that is applied to the algorithm to ensure that the encryption output is unique. Encryption is an extremely important technology in modern computing for security purposes, particularly with the growth of the internet. Without encryption, any data you send over a network could easily be stolen by someone and misused. We transmit a lot of private and confidential information over the internet. Things like usernames and passwords, bank details, and pictures and videos. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people out there who would like to get their hands on this information and misuse it. Equally unfortunate, it is not difficult for malicious users to steal this data when it is being transmitted over a network. That's why we often encrypt the data we're transmitting over the internet. Historically, when encrypting data, we have used the same key to both encrypt and decrypt the data. This is called symmetric encryption. However, if we use a symmetric encryption method when transmitting data over the internet, then we'd need to send the recipient the decryption key as well as the encrypted data. The attacker could easily just steal both the key along with the data and decrypt it. A way around this is to use asymmetric encryption or public key encryption, where the key is broken up into two parts, a public key and a private key. These two keys are completely different and you cannot figure out the private key from the public key. Asymmetric encryption works like this. You give the public key to anyone who wants to send you a message. They encrypt the message with the public key. The message is sent. Then the private key, which is held and kept secure by the receiver, is used to decrypt the message. A firewall is designed to control the flow of packets of data into or out of a network. It does this by monitoring incoming and outgoing network traffic and blocking suspicious packets based on a set of security rules. A firewall can be a hardware device installed between external and internal networks to protect against external cyber threats. Most commonly, this would be between the internet and the business's LAN. It can also be a software program installed on a computer. This performs the same packet filtering as a hardware firewall, but protecting individual devices rather than the whole network. However, it also has additional features such as filtering network traffic to and from software applications. Most businesses will use both a hardware firewall and software firewalls installed on each individual device. You will have seen a firewall in use in your school. Have you ever tried to access game websites or maybe social media and had your access blocked? 
This is because the firewall is blocking your attempts to get out of your network. Firewalls can also block the type of files being transmitted. Any files ending in .exe, .cmd or .bat may be blocked as these could contain malware. Firewalls can monitor network traffic and only allow IP addresses that it recognizes into the network. If a firewall detects packets from an IP address known to be used by hackers, the firewall can be configured to block all of these. It can also close down network ports to only allow certain types of traffic, like web pages, into the network. Every computer that wants to communicate over a network has an NIC, or Network Interface Card. In fact, a device may have more than one, so that it can have multiple different connections. Every NIC will have its own MAC address. This stands for Media Access Control, and it is a 48-bit number expresses six two-digit hex codes. It is burned directly into the network card on each machine, making each NIC globally unique. We sometimes refer to a MAC address as a physical address or hardware address, as, unlike IP addresses, they are fixed and cannot change. We use MAC addresses for directing traffic within a local area network. Due to the MAC address being unique to each device, we can use this to limit who can and cannot access a network. Any device that is included on our whitelist will be allowed access to the network. Any device on our blacklist will not be allowed access to the network. This is a really simple and easy way to protect the network from unwanted network traffic, though it isn't extremely secure as an attacker could easily spoof their MAC address. Typically, we will set up this MAC address filtering on our router, as this is our gateway between our network and the internet. So, keeping passwords safe and secure is one important way of stopping unauthorized access to your network. Encryption is the process of converting plain text data into an encoded form known as ciphertext. We encrypt data using an encryption algorithm and an encryption key. We usually use asymmetric encryption, where a different key is used to encrypt the data than is used to decrypt it. Firewalls will monitor network traffic coming into and out of your network. They will inspect IP addresses and block any traffic from addresses they don't know. MAC address filtering will use a device's MAC address to decide if it can or cannot access a network. 